What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe, new videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. Today, I have a very special guest who's gonna tell us all about the field of biomedical engineering, uh, why he went into it, so, and some uh, a typical day for him and some tips for you guys. Uh, Sean, what's up man, how you doing? Hey, what's going on Dr. Webb, how's it going man? Uh, doing, doing well. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the uh, viewers and tell us uh, who you are and kind of what you do. Uh, my name is uh, Sean DeLosa. I'm a, a biomedical engineer at uh, JJ Level Federal Healthcare Center. That's uh, basically the VA vet for veterans, you know, military veterans. Take care of the medical systems. Uh, right now, my job, I've progressed into what we call biomedical information systems because I also have a, a background in computer, info, in computer information systems. So I take care of the medical network side of the medical device support. Gotcha. So yeah. that's, that's more, I'm more away from the system side now, I'm more in the background doing the you know, computer networks, software, things like that now. Gotcha. Uh, for the people who don't know, I, I, I kind of don't fully understand it also. What, what is a biomedical engineer? Uh, biomedical engineer is, is a, it's a discipline that uh, combines the use of the medical system support life functions of uh, you know patients uh, everyday life we have home health that's also a biomedical system so the engineers are the people who design the systems and I'm more on the technical side we do the support and repair and uh, you know installation anything like that as far as those systems go so what I would say a biomedical engineer somebody uses a, a scientific discipline to um, support life and health and uh, healing Gotcha. So you, you currently work in a hospital? Yes. And what is a typical thing that someone would call you for um, in the hospital? Well, I've seen biomed from uh, it's the, 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 uh, the abbreviation for biomedical engineers, mostly biomed. I mean, I know biomed, you, okay. you know, anytime you got a broken system, you'll probably hear somebody say, this needs to go to biomed. Gotcha. So for me, I've seen everything from things in a nine clinic, like a full opter. That needs mm -hmm. to be clean, you know, something as simple as that, where we'd have to take it apart, clean the lenses. And I've seen it all the way to like a sterilizer. I've worked mm -hmm. with sterilizers, you know, door gaskets, hot steam, burned myself a few times. I've seen yeah. I've worked on x ray systems, you know, and uh, MRIs, nuclear medicine systems. And now, you know, to, to complete that, I'm doing the medical side and this installation of the application because, as you probably know, we have systems, but then the systems not good if the doctor doesn't understand how to operate the software which controls the system gotcha you know kind of gotcha. encapsulates that whole thing so a typical thing somebody might call me is uh like we have something called a Q-flow, it's basically, basically a patient ticketing system yeah but it becomes such an intricate part of the everyday workflow that if um q flow goes down of course i get a bunch of pharmacists calling me saying our q flow doesn't work mm. So that's an application or an x-ray device. If they go to take the x-ray and it doesn't fire x-rays, we'll get a call saying, hey, my x-ray system's down. And we'll respond and, and get that back working. Gotcha. So basically, any, pretty much any equipment in the hospital, x-ray machine or some type of uh, fluoroscopy machine. Right. Or x-ray machine, labs, uh, eye clinic, um, ortho. You know, yeah. you have your ortho uh, systems where you probably work with a CR. Yeah, mini, mini C or even your that that saw, a cast, the saw um, cast saw. We work yeah. with those. The ones so anything in the yeah. Saw. So anything in the hospital they can call you about, and then you have to figure out what's wrong with it and try to fix it. Yeah, uh, that's basically what it is. It's like uh, you know they give you the problem, and you have to be the problem solver. So every day we're you know we're basically just everyday problem solvers. Got you. Um, is there, did they teach you in school to go through a certain um, a logarithm? Um, you do this, if this doesn't work, you go down this path, or, or you just uh, kind of know over the years how to fix them most days. Yeah, well, what you're saying is like troubleshooting, and, and troubleshooting. I got to start in the Air Force, which was, uh, you know, it's a biomedical engineering path. It's more like a two year course combined in the year for the Air mm -hmm. Force. You know, the Air Force kind of crams. Yeah. This is a lot of, high level things into a small amount of time. And what you're referring to is something we would call troubleshooting. So, you know, a lot of technicians develop their own troubleshooting steps. And uh, 
basically that's what it is. You start at the simplest level and then you progress from there. So that's, yeah, we all know how to troubleshoot very well, typically, depending on the importance of the system. If it's something mm -hmm. specifically like support, surgery, things like that, then we're going to have to really go up there and have a quick fix in mind right away. So. Gotcha. And you mentioned the uh, Air Force training. Um, if someone wasn't in the Air Force, if they wanted to become a biomedical engineer, what type of schooling would be required to become one? Well, you have to have a four-year degree to be a biomedical engineer. And uh, there's a lot of schools that offer good programs for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest, the, uh, the military school that I went to is pretty much on is a, a preferential, you know, um, training that yeah. it's asked for, especially in places like the VA or even the third parties that also uh, contract with hospitals. Gotcha. You know, a four year degree is definitely a baseline. And you can go to schools like uh, my son goes to Marquette. They offer a biomedical engineering program or, mm. you know, uh, IUPUI, Fort Wayne or different, different places like that. Basically a four year degree, uh, is where you would need to start. Gotcha. Do you have to have any type of medical background or knowledge? Do they teach you everything that you need to know? Uh, no, you don't need any background or knowledge. And then uh, you basically will be taught everything you need to know. Yeah. I know as far as the Air Force goes, that that's a more of a rigorous program. That it's not a. Uh, it's a whole lot different from the, you know your four year program. You're you're accepted into that program no matter mm -hmm. what. So as long as you pay your tuition, you're in that program and pass your you know pass the class or whatever, but in the Air Force, we do things called progress checks. Um, you're gonna be tested on your knowledge, and if you don't pass that portion of it, you can be eliminated from the course. Gotcha. It's like, like almost like Survivor. You don't pass gotcha. a certain <laughs> point, you're gonna be moved from that program because they only want the best people to get through that program because that's, yeah, yeah. that's a high dollar, high value program for the equipment. You, you know, you're working on millions of dollars of equipment that matter to all our physicians that need this equipment and all our patients that need these services so yeah I, yeah what i remember from the air force from my technical training to be a medic i remember the biomedical the biomed group they were there for a year i believe for a long time and that's, and that's after, after your basic electronics portion of which is like four months uh -huh. we moved on to the biomed program so okay Gotcha. Uh, well, what is a typical day for you? Usually it kind of starts at what time and ends at what time? How do your days usually look? Well, for me, like like I said, uh, I've, I've been on every level of biomed. Where I am right now, as far as the systems go, I'm more of the only, I'm more of the systems administrator for all of mm -hmm. biomed right now. So my day comes in and I could just spend hours going through my system checks and making sure all our servers are up, all our software is up, mm -hmm. checking the areas, making sure everybody's devices are up you know that can take a few hours just in the morning i call it rounding mm -hmm. you know, i'll never want to not know a system isn't up or wait to is a problem before you decide to fix it you know you want to have everything up and running because patients have to be seen mm -hmm. like just coming for their appointments staff need to see the patients you know you know definitely yeah. see, i'm like me and you are kind of like you're our counterpart yep in order for you to do what you do, we have to have to make sure you have what you need to do that. Yeah. So. Yep. Gotcha. Um, and then after you complete your training, your four year degree, become a biomedical engineer. Um, what I know it varies by location. How much can one expect to make uh, kind of at, like an average salary? And let me and let me rephrase that. that uh, like I was saying before we started this, there's actually two paths. There's the, you know, you can go in and get your four year degree, which is an engineering path. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of people who come straight out of biomed from the Air Force or either who have a two-year degree. Mm -hmm. and they're the technicians who are actually doing a lot of great work as just a technician. Gotcha. So you don't necessarily have to have a full four-year degree, but if you mm -hmm. plan to be an actual professional engineer, that, that is your baseline. Yeah. But uh, as far as a technician, if, all, if you just wanted to be the technician, then that two-year degree or that Air Force training is going to be vital for you. But uh, coming out, uh, right now, biomed is a pretty hot field. I know when I came in, and you know, um, I don't make this now, but when I first started with the VA, I think we started at 42,000. Mm -hmm. So I would think that's probably the average salary starting now. Mm -hmm. 15 years ago for me, I make a lot more than that now, but. Gotcha. 
Um, uh, uh, something interesting I saw in the news recently was a, a medical school. They offered a MD in, and dual degree in engineering. That's here in Texas. I thought that was pretty interesting that I saw. But, yeah, uh, I thought that was interesting too because I worked with a few. Uh, actually, I worked with quite a few, a lot of doctors, and uh, I didn't realize a lot of them had four year engineering degrees, biomedical yeah. engineering degrees. Yeah. And I just thought that was curious, and they they use that as their pre, you know, pre med to yeah. going, going to uh, medical school. Yeah. And to me, right now, it almost seems like the newer doctors, as you you probably know, you have to come in with some computer knowledge, mm -hmm. skill because of all of this software you're going to be using, yeah, types of devices you're using, you got to have some understanding. Right now, there's a knowledge gap between a lot of the older doctors, I would say, and then you mm -hmm. see the younger doctors who are more used to the applications, and, you know, things like that. Social so, media, Instagram, Twitter, yeah. You know, they want to do, you know, you guys want to do surgeries from a distance now, you know. Yeah, <laughs> robotic surgery, yeah. yeah robotics, it's definitely yep. growing. Gotcha. Um, what advice would you give to someone who may be interested in becoming a biomedical engineer? Um, I would say that that's definitely your interest and that's something that, you know, you're, you're skilled at. You know, I started out, my mom would tell you, I used to tinker with things from eight years old, take stuff apart, you know, toasters, radio. So I've always <laughs> had an interest in electronics. You yeah. Know, years, you know, things like that. So if that's your interest, um, I would say to decide what it is, what what you in initially intend to be when you're done. If you mm -hmm. intend to be a professional engineer, that's something you really want to do, you want to design, then I would find a four-year degree program to go into. If, if you want to become a technician, then there's a lot of schools out here that we're, you know, that you can go to. I know I know a few guys that were going to DeVry. Um, I know for the VA, the majority of us have all started out in the uh in the military, either Army or Navy has a program in, in uh, Air Force. They actually all go to the same training now. We yeah. used to have a separate biomedical engineering training, but now it's all combined down there at, uh, I think it's Fort Sam in Houston. Okay, yeah. But thank you so much for uh, coming on tonight, Mr. Sean, and telling us all about your field, man. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime, Doc, man. All right, you're welcome. Everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.